In this video, we'll be explaining the entire story of Leon S. Kennedy from Resident Evil, including his journey from being a rookie police officer to eventually becoming one of the expert special agents working directly under the president. And there's only one place to start, his childhood. Leon is known to have suffered a traumatic childhood due to his family's connections to crime. This ultimately led him to being orphaned after his entire family was killed. Leon only survived with the aid of a single police officer, an act which inspired him to one day become a police officer himself, in order to similarly protect as many people as he could. Upon graduating from the police academy at the age of 21, Leon requested assignment to work for the Raccoon Police Department. His reason was interest in the widely publicized, but unsolved, bizarre murder cases taking place in and around the Arklay Mountains. Raccoon City Incident 1998 Leon had no travel plans or apartment in Raccoon City, and in the hasty departure, broke up with his girlfriend. Stopping at a motel for the night, he passed out from heavy drinking and woke up on the afternoon of September 29, a Tuesday. Leon continued driving into the city hungover, now late for reporting in to the station. Driving through Arklay County, he passed through the highway blockade erected by the United States Army and National Army Guard on the night of September 29th, which had fallen due to the chaos within the city. When Leon arrived at the Mesoil gas station just outside the city to fill up on gas, he heard a crash inside and went to investigate. Inside, he encountered a zombie eating a police officer and fled the station. Running into Claire Redfield outside, they quickly hijacked an Arklay County Sheriff's Department patrol car instead. Unfortunately, the car was destroyed when a gasoline tanker collided with it, and the two were separated and traveled to the police station independently. The station itself had already fallen to zombies, and the only unzombified police officers were the injured Lieutenant Marvin Branagh, Elliot Edward, and Police Chief Brian Irons. When Leon tried to pull Elliot through an emergency shutter door, the zombies severed the officer's torso, causing him to die a few seconds later. After being rescued by Marvin Branagh, he was briefed on the situation and told that Elliot had found the secret passageway that could lead out of the station. Once he entered the passageway underneath the station, he encountered Dr. William Birkin, who fell into an abyss after being defeated by Leon. In the police station's basement, Leon met Ada Wong a corporate spy from one of Umbrella's rival companies sent to steal the G-Virus. To protect the mission, she claimed to be an FBI agent looking for proof of Umbrella USA's illegal bioweapons project. She soon became aware of Ben Bertolucci, a freelance journalist who she believed had uncovered useful information for her mission while spying on Umbrella researchers. Although Bertolucci was able to uncover information on a conspiracy between Umbrella USA and the local police, which was the reason for his arrest, it wasn't enough for her mission. Ben was soon killed by the T-00 BOW, sent to kill survivors in the station. Leon and Wong continued on to the city's sewers, where they found transport to Nest, Umbrella's laboratory dedicated to G-Virus research. Leon was left to do much of the work himself when in the laboratory. Though he himself had suffered a gunshot wound, Wong's leg injury made her unable to continue. During the exploration of the laboratory, Leon became aware of Wong's real mission after Annette Birkin told him that she was a mercenary. After he cornered her, she fell off a shaft, though she successfully escaped the facility as it began to self-destruct without the G-Virus sample. Fleeing to Ness's bottom platform, Leon reunited with Claire and the young Sherry Birkin. The facility was destroyed, with Dr. William Birkin perishing soon after. STRATCOM Recruitment 1998 Following their escape from Raccoon City, on the morning of September 30th, Claire and Leon split up. She continued to search for Chris, while a wounded Leon continued to look after a weakened Sherry. After seeking out the U.S. military stationed outside the city for protection, Leon and Sherry were apprehended. Sherry was taken away and placed in protective custody as a research subject, while Leon was interrogated by Adam Benford, a high-ranking government official and military intelligence officer. Leon was deemed to know too much about the incident. But, as his survival demonstrated anti-BOW skills highly sought after in the military, he was given an ultimatum. In exchange for Sherry's safety and his own life, he was to be recruited into a classified anti-Umbrella military agency, rapidly formed in the wake of the incident, to destroy Umbrella and prevent similar disasters, answering solely to the President. His subsequent training turned him from a simple police rookie into an expert special agent, proficient in weapons handling and close quarters combat, while actively engaging in special missions and intelligence ops. Operation Javier 2002 
Leon had been chosen to take part in Operation Javier, a special operation intended to take down several drug cartels that took years to plan. He was placed under the command of Major Jack Krauser, who trained him in close quarters knife combat and battle tactics. In 2002, Leon was deployed alongside Krauser and a number of other soldiers into the Amparo jungle. As the mission continued, the group were gradually overwhelmed by an unknown enemy and abandoned by their superiors. Though unclear whether the mission's objectives were met, Leon and Krauser emerged as the only survivors, their compatriots dying as a result of the mission. Operation Javier was soon covered up by the government, including Leon's involvement. Los Illuminados 2004. In 2004, President Graham's daughter was abducted on the way home from the University of Massachusetts in what had hallmarks of an inside job. American spies reported having seen the girl, Ashley Graham, in Spain and tracked her to an isolated rural community. With all government agents being thoroughly investigated to identify the mole, Leon was sent alone to investigate the area. Leon arrives at Valdelobos a remote, mountainous village located in Spain, along with two local cops from Cuerpo Nacional de Policia, who the chief sent to assist him with the search. Arriving at the remote location, Officer Castaño excuses himself into the forest. Finding that the officer had gone for an extended amount of time, Leon goes outside to search for the officer, while the other remains in the car. He sets off after Castaño's trail and stumbles on the old and dilapidated hunter's lodge. Entering the lodge, Leon explores its surroundings and encounters the resident of the lodge, who acts in strange behavior. Leon asks the man in Spanish if he had seen the missing officer, but no answers are given. Looking around the room, he notices the bloody badge of Officer Castaño and is suddenly attacked by the seemingly crazed man. Though he manages to dodge and inadvertently break his neck, hearing Officer Castaño scream, Leon follows the sound down to the basement, where he discovers his mutilated corpse, as well as the radio emitting requests for help from the other, before the signal breaks up. In the basement, Leon hears a sudden crack coming from the upstairs, and sees the villager, who approaches him despite the broken neck, with tentacles now sprouting from his wounds but he manages to kill the man. Leon makes his way back to the main part of the lodge and discovers evidence that Ashley is being held in Lago, the lake part of Valdelobos. Leon informs his agency's support operative, Ingrid Hunnigan, of his discovery. Having found a lead, Leon escapes the pursuers and proceeds further into the village square where he witnesses the ritualistic burning and execution of Pyre, of the remaining police officer by the villagers. He soon finds himself quickly surrounded by the villagers of Valdelobos, including a crazed man who wears a sack as a mask and wields a chainsaw, but buys enough time until the church bell rings, rendering the villagers docile and dropping their weapons before retreating back to the town hall. Leon stands outside, puzzled by the villagers' actions, and left confused about what just occurred. Shortly afterwards, Hunnigan contacts and informs Leon of a path to the lake by the large windmill, and encounters the burnt house where he hears a banging noise emitting from the cellar. Inside, Leon discovers a captured man writhing in a body bag and removes his restraints. Leon meets a man named Luis Serra Navarro and attempts to rescue him until the chief of the local village, named Batorres Mendez, intercepts and disarms Leon and throws him across the room, leaving him incapacitated. In his knocked out state, Mendez approaches and injects him with the egg of Las Plagas. Leon awakens and finds himself in restraints alongside Lewis, who knows that he is searching for the missing Ashley, and had heard chatter of Ashley moving to another location, which is the old chapel in another part of the village. Before he can talk more, a ganado enters the room and proceeds to attack the pair, though the two manage to lock the ganado in a strangulation position with their chains. Leon proceeds to yank his chain hard enough to break the ganado's neck. Lewis retrieves the key and first frees himself before leaving the room, with Leon following soon after. Following his breakout, Hunnigan contacts him and is informed by his recent discovery of Ashley's new whereabouts, with Leon asking her to go over a background check in regards to Lewis, due to his suspicious aura. After traversing through the village, Leon finds himself going through the manor of the village chief, Mendez, where he gains the key needed to advance to the chapel, but is stopped by Mendez. Leon tries to shoot him, but Mendez shows no visible injury and retaliates by proceeding to strangle him until he sees that Leon's plague of parasite is advancing and claims that his blood has accepted the gift. He throws Leon across the room until he is shot in the head by an unseen woman outside the window. 
Mendez lets him go and gives chase after the woman, leaving Leon to wonder as to what Mendez meant by gifted. Recovering from his attack, Hunnigan contacts Leon and sends her reports regarding Lewis, which infuriates Leon when he discovers that Lewis used to work for Umbrella and laments that he should have left the man to rot. As evening falls, Leon returns to the village square, only to find that the tower has been destroyed, blocking his path to the chapel. Leon ends up outside the church, where he discovers that the cult members have taken Ashley into the church to await Saddler's command, and have hidden the key on the other side of the Lake Lago to hinder his progress. Leon makes his way to the boat and navigates his way around the lake, but before he can travel far, the boat malfunctions, and Leon is stranded in the middle of the lake. Leon engages in a battle with Del Lago and emerges victorious as its body sinks below the lake. Exhausted from the fight, Leon coughs up blood before passing out on the boat. Once more, Leon begins to see visions of the cult leader Sadler, who proudly proclaims that he and Ashley will join his coven and share his holy blessing before Sadler infests Leon with more parasites, causing his body to writhe in pain before waking up to find himself where he was before. Leon pilots his boat back to the mainland, where Hunnigan reaches out to him again after three hours of radio silence. As night falls, he comes across the corpses of the two missing hikers with bloody markings, previously mentioned to have been the latest in the disappearance. On his way back, Leon is forced to fight against another mutated creature, El Gigante, and survives as the creature lies lifeless on the ground. He finally arrives at the church and enters the property, where he discovers Ashley's personal items were left around the area. Leon approaches her confinement room, where Ashley attempts to subdue him with a candlestick. But Leon disarms her and announces his intentions of rescuing her. However, Ashley rushes outside the room to see that hordes of villagers of Granados are coming for them. In the church, Ashley grows concerned about how they will get out of the tight situation. But Leon reassures her and asks her to place her trust in him, just as her father had placed his trust in him to get her home safely. Ashley reluctantly agrees, and they both make their way outside the church. Outside, Leon contacts Hunnigan about his successful retrieval of the target, and she sends a chopper and coordinates for their extraction. Heavy rainfall descends as the pair begins to make their way to the extraction point. Leon and Ashley arrive at the location, only to find themselves surrounded by hordes of Granados. In the distance, Lewis gestures to them to head inside the cabin, and the pair rush inside for safety. Still furious since his discovery of Lewis's record, Leon corners him and attempts to interrogate him, but is interrupted as the Granados begin to make their way around the premises. Leon and Lewis hide Ashley away for the meantime, while the former holds down the fort against numerous hostiles. After the non-stop onslaught, Ashley reveals an opening path, and the trio flee from the premises, with Leon shooting the chains that held the wooden portcullis as it cuts them from further pursuers. Hunnigan contacts Leon to inform him that the helicopter will not be able to reach their location due to the worsening weather. She expresses a desire to do something more to help them, but Leon reassures her that they will make it back safely. Leon and Ashley pass through a checkpoint area where they are once again ambushed by the village chief Mendez and pursued throughout the area with their escape continually hindered by other villagers. Leon and Ashley cross a narrow and fragile wooden passage alongside the cliff's edge, where Ashley gets her legs stuck in wooden planks. Covering for her, Leon shoots the pursuing Granado, causing the passage to collapse entirely, but they both make it to the other side. Leon looks on as the villager chief walks away and continues his pursuit. Leon and Ashley go through the old decrepit slaughterhouse, where Leon is ambushed by the village chief. The chief tells him to cease their struggle and submit to the cult's will. Knowing that a battle is inevitable, Leon urges Ashley to escape from the area as he hurls a fuel tank towards the chief and blows it up. This does little to phase him, as he reveals his mutated form, and Leon begins his fight. In the end, Mendez dies as Leon survives his encounter with the village chief for the final time. Outside, Ashley breaks a nearby window for Leon to escape from the burning building. Leon thanks Ashley for her rescue, as the pair moves away from the building as it burns to capture the attention of the others. The pair makes their way to the castle and enters the area as the gate behind slowly raises and locks them in. After entering the castle, Lewis contacts Leon and offers a suppressant that can help slow down the progression of the parasite. He suggests that the three of them meet in the castle's courtyard. Inside, Leon and Ashley meet the Castellan of the castle, Ramon Salazar, who demands that Ashley be handed over to spread the parasite all over the world, under the will of its cult leader, Sadler. 
Leon and Ashley reject the demand, but they meet some resistance from the Zealots. However, they manage to escape, fighting through Salazar's armed men. The pair reach the courtyard, where Ashley begins to show worsening symptoms. Ashley faints in Leon's arms, and in her place comes a puppeteered Ashley who grabs Leon's knife and tries to attack him, but fails. Before Leon can do anything, the gate separates the two as Ashley regains control and, horrifyingly, realizes she unintentionally hurt Leon. Fearing that she will hurt him again, Ashley runs away from Leon. After the tense situation, Leon contacts Hunnigan and informs her of recent events, but he cannot get a hold of her as their signal slowly breaks up leaving Leon in the dark. Retreating back, Leon tries to track Ashley down throughout the castle, when he encounters Ada again for the first time in six years. Leon asks her about the organization that she is now working for, but she playfully avoids answering his question. Picking up their bearings, Ada suggests that he abandon Ashley, who she believes is doomed. In the hopes of another chance of encounter, Leon rejects the proposal. Running out of time, Ada suggests that they continue the discussion at a later date, and escapes through the window. After navigating around, Leon finds a tearful Ashley secluded in a room, and attempts to approach her, but she recoils away, fearing that she might be taken control of once again. Leon tries to reassure her when Ashley notices his symptoms, and is surprised to find out that he has been implanted as well. Leon consoles and reminds her that it's fine to be afraid, but she can't stop moving forward. He assures her that they will make it out alive, although Ashley is uncertain of the possibility, but she appreciates his encouraging words. After an emotional bonding between the two, Lewis contacts Leon, who is puzzled by his absence, to tell him that he needs his help as he is in the ballroom just beyond the courtyard. Leon proceeds to head to his informed location, where, along the way, he is trapped in a cage, which separates him from Ashley. Leon urges Ashley to run as others give chase, while he kills his own assailants and defends himself from many more. Ashley successfully frees Leon, but is forced to witness her getting taken away by Salazar's henchman, Verdugo. When Ada notices her getting carried away to the throne room, she contacts Leon and gives him the location. When Leon reaches the throne room, he sees Ashley being held down by zealots, marked with blood. Before he can take further action, Leon is trampled by Verdugo. He watches as Ashley forcefully drinks the black liquid, which Salazar claims will make her suffering much worse. Ashley writhes as her symptoms begin to worsen. Satisfied with showing Leon Ashley's suffering, Salazar bids farewell and orders the Verdugo to toss Leon into a hole below. Falling below, Leon manages to save himself by grabbing onto a chain used to execute a former zealot. Descending down the cave, Leon confronts the Verdugo and successfully survives the encounter. Upon reaching the mines, Leon sees Lewis standing by with the suppressants. After injecting himself with the suppressants, Lewis warns Leon that the suppressants' effect will not last long. But Leon determines that Ashley is still the priority and is willing to die to finish his mission. Lewis accompanies along with Leon. Along the way, Leon expresses his lack of trust in someone who used to work for Umbrella, although Lewis reassures him that the company is done and is willing to help him out to make amends, with the additional reason being that he used to work for Los Illuminados and regrets it. Advancing forward, Leon sees Lewis find a path to the blast furnace, where Leon is grabbed by another El Gigante. Lewis tries to pull him back, but the giant's force drags both of them. Lewis saves Leon from its grasp, with Leon warning him of the second El Gigante's incoming attacks. The two of them find themselves in a fight against the two creatures. Using the environment to their advantage, the pair manages to slay the creatures. Arriving above, Lewis is suddenly stabbed in the back by Jack Krauser, much to Leon's shock and betrayal when he discovers that Krauser has been the mole in Ashley's kidnapping and willingly works for the cult. Krauser recovers the sample and proceeds to fight Leon in close quarters combat with a knife. Leon loses the fight against Krauser, though Lewis manages to save him by shooting his knife away. Disappointed at this lack of change, Krauser leaves the premises. Heavily injured, Lewis slumps on the ground and gives Leon the key to his lab, where they can remove the parasites before telling Leon that people can change. Lewis dies, as Leon regretfully looks on. Leon seeks to avenge his death by going after Krauser, and boards the lift to the surface. Inside, Ada gives another tip on Ashley's location being moved to the clock tower, and informs him that there is still time to save her. From the top, 
Leon sees Salazar escort Ashley inside the building and goes after their trail. Inside the building, Salazar hands Ashley over to Krauser, while reminding him to declare his loyalty to the cause. Before Leon can reach them, Krauser carries Ashley away, with the drawbridge raised up, leaving Salazar to face Leon. Salazar taunts Leon, who has had enough of his antics, shoots Salazar in the chest and head as he falls down below. Still hearing his laugh, Leon faces off against the mutated Salazar as he navigates the surrounding environment and tries to kill him. Salazar can only cry out for Sadler's help before succumbing to his injuries inflicted by Leon. Making his way outside, Leon sees Krauser piloting the boat with Ashley as its passenger. He makes haste towards the dock, where Ada appears to have the key for the other boat. On the boat ride, Leon confides in Ada about how he has changed along with the world following the destruction of Raccoon City. He explains that saving one life often results in the deaths of hundreds more, and he asks Ada if she has changed as well, or if she continues to use him for her own agenda, like she did six years ago. However, Ada gives no answer, and leaves Leon as he pilots the boat to the docking point. On the rocky shores, Leon witnesses heavily reinforced entry and Krauser taking Ashley inside the base. Successfully infiltrating the base, Leon discovers that unconscious Ashley is being kept inside a room that requires a level access keycard. Acquiring the necessary keycard, Leon opens Ashley's cell and sees that her symptoms are worsening by the minute. Taking the last suppressant, Leon injects Ashley with the serum, successfully buying her some time. Beginning to feel his dose wearing out, Leon exhaustively sits Ashley by his side until she wakes up. After waiting for some time, Ashley awakens and is informed of Lewis's passing. She vows to get rid of the parasites in their bodies for his sake. Leon contacts Ada to find the location of Lewis's laboratory, and she responds that important facilities are usually housed on the top of the summit. Knowing where to go, the pair sets out to reach the top. On the way up, Ashley reminisces about the moments that they worked well as a team and expresses her desire to become an agent like Leon. However, he reaffirms her that their main priority is to escape. Entering the Amber storeroom, Sadler and his followers reveal themselves, with Sadler introducing himself as the speaker for the cult. Leon responds by shooting Sadler in the eye, but the injury heals itself quickly afterwards. Sadler incapacitates Leon under his control and takes a hold of Ashley, whom he commands to kill. Ashley forcefully picks up the gun, but regains enough control that she barely misses Leon and kills the other two followers. Before she can shoot Leon, the gun jams, forcing Sadler and his followers to escort Ashley out of the premise. After they have moved far enough away, Leon is released from Sadler's control and retrieves his gun. After chasing after Sadler, Leon comes across Krauser, who taunts Leon for his lack of judgment and mocks him for his inability to save anyone, causing Leon to snap about Krauser's own reasons for working with the cult, with the latter saying that power is the most important thing and how the cult granted him that. They both proceed to fight to the death as Leon tries to make his way towards the tower where Ashley is held. Outmatched, Krauser begins to mutate his arm as Leon makes his way to the entrance of the tower, but he arrives late as the drawbridge rises up and Krauser appears behind him, now with the other arm mutated. The two duel with each other and Leon emerges victorious as Krauser is incapacitated from inflicted injuries. Acknowledging that his death is inevitable, Krauser tells Leon to do what he has to do, and Leon stabs Krauser in the heart with his own knife, killing him. Before drawing his last breath, Krauser proudly tells Leon that he has trained him well, and Leon agrees with the sentiment. The drawbridge raises back down, and Leon enters, though not before a regretful glance back at Krauser's body. On top of the building, Leon looks out at their heavily secured sanctuary, with Ashley escorted inside by Sadler's followers. As Leon makes his way across, he is assisted by Mike, who pilots a combat chopper sent by Hunnigan. But the former is stopped by swarms of Novistadors that surround the vehicle and damage its parts, causing it to burst into flames and spiral out of control, ultimately crashing and killing Mike. Enraged at Sadler, Leon determines to put him in his grave. Arriving at their sanctuary, Leon sees Ashley unconsciously lying at the stone altar and tries to reach her, but is stopped in his tracks by Sadler, who tells him that their bodies and thoughts are connected through the holy body and persuades him into accepting the gift. Like Ashley, furious, Leon lunges at Sadler, 
but the Plaga progresses through his body at a fast rate, until he is nearly under its control. Ada arrives at the scene and fires bullets at Sadler, buying Leon and Ashley enough time to escape as she cuts them off from pursuers. With limited time, the pair stumbles their way to Lewis's laboratory, with Leon seeing visions clouding over his sight, but not stopping from reaching it. Using the key entrusted by Lewis, the pair arrives at the laboratory, where Ashley is set up for removal first. As Leon commences the painful process, happy that Ashley is now safe from harm, Leon faints on the floor. In his incapacitated state, Ashley successfully moves Leon for parasite removal, with the pair now free from Sadler's control. Outside, Leon and Ashley notice Ada being held captive, intended as bait to lure Leon out. Sensing danger, Leon leaves Ashley behind and heads towards the location where he frees Ada from her restraints. Leon is soon swarmed by swarms of Novistadors, and Sadler shortly appears, attempting to strangle him. Ada saves him as the two confront the mutated Sadler, who charges at both of them, separating the pair. Leon faces Sadler and successfully beats him as he falls into the sea below, but mutates once more into a giant mass creature. He holds out long enough for Ada to toss him a rocket launcher, which he uses to severely weaken the creature. Finally exposed, Leon uses Sadler's staff and impales him, vanquishing the creature. Leon attempts to retrieve the amber, but it is picked up by Ada, who tells Leon of the arrangement made. Ada offers a ride on the helicopter, but Leon refuses, knowing that this is the point where they depart. Ada leaves the premises as the facilities on the island explode, and Ashley arrives at the scene. Leon rushes Ashley, and the two head towards the dock and ride in a water scooter left behind by Ada, and navigate their way around the collapsing cave and burning facilities. Making it out, the two witness the destruction of the island. Ashley offers to put Leon in her protection deal, but Leon refuses, seeing how she can handle herself. The two make their way home as the Hunnigan family reaches contact with Leon. Meeting Chris 2010 In 2010, at one of the TerraSave reunions, Leon and Chris Redfield met for the first time, thanks to Claire's presentation, and created a friendship that would help break the barrier between the BSAA and the United States government. Global Bioterrorist Attacks 2013 Leon met with President Benford at Ivy University in Tall Oaks on Saturday, June 29, 2013, where he was informed of the President's new policy for the War on Terror. While it was harmful to the American prestige and defense to reveal the truth about its involvement in Raccoon City, the President believed it to be necessary for long-term relations. In the evening, President Benford was infected by a newly engineered virus the chrysalid virus, and, reluctantly, killed by Leon when he tried to kill a Secret Service agent, Helena Harper. Leon escaped the city to the Tall Oaks Cathedral, on Harper's advisement, where she led him to a limestone cavern where a bioweapons research facility was based. There, she revealed to him her sister had been abducted on the orders of National Security Advisor Derek C. Simmons to force her participation in a plot to assassinate President Benford. Simmons's organization, the family, had taken it upon itself to research bioweapons on behalf of the United States in order to guarantee the U.S. beat rival countries, such as China, in a hypothetical bioweapons gap. Soon after the bombing, Leon and Harper got in touch with Hunnigan and had her misreport them as deceased following Simmons's declaration of them as suspects in the attack. Having learned he was bound for China, the two were booked onto a flight to take their investigation to him. On their way to China, complications arose when a Lepotica chrysalid hatched in the plane, infecting all the passengers with the sea virus. Leon and Harper were forced to fight their way through the zombie-infested plane, and it crashes close to where Jake Muller and Sherry Birkin happened to be. When the four met, Leon asked Sherry what she is doing here. She replied that she was on protective detail. Sherry returned the same question to Leon, in which he responded that he and Harper were trying to track down Simmons the man behind all of the chaos, when Sherry told him that she reported to Simmons. During Leon's argument with Sherry, Eustonok appeared on the destroyed plane, and the four of them team up to defeat the creature. After a heated battle, Leon and Harper were separated from Jake and Sherry when an electrical tower fell on Eustonok. Sherry yelled to Leon that she and Jake were meeting Simmons at the Kunlung building. Before Leon could tell her what to do, the tower exploded. As Harper wondered if they would be all right, Leon told her that they would be, as long as Jake was as good as he claimed to be. While making their way to Ku Chen, 
Leanne and Harper had to search through a whole market for three keys to unlock a door, all while they were being chased by a Ross Klapanji. They managed to kill it by forcing it into a grinder. When Leon and Harper found Wong, they followed her into a building, dodging several traps along the way. Eventually, they got to a room just in time to see Chris Redfield and Pierce Nivens cornering her, whom they believed to be the one responsible for the death of Chris's men and the outbreaks that have occurred. Chris had his assault rifle aimed and ready to shoot when Leon knocked it out of his hands to prevent it from killing her. They had a brief struggle, ending with the two pointing their guns at each other. Leon told Chris to put his gun down, saying that she was a key witness and they needed her. But Chris refused and abstractly told Leon that she is the one who committed the global bioterrorist attacks. Leon disagreed, saying that it was Simmons who was really responsible. Chris yelled that he lost all his men because of Wong and Leon responded that he lost over 70,000 people, including the president, because of Simmons. After a tense moment, Wong managed to escape with a flash bomb, and Chris pursued her with no intention of harming her after Leon's words. Leon and Harper then made their leave to find Simmons. Reaching the Kuhn Lung building, Leon assured Harper that it was all right for them to pursue Simmons and let Chris follow Wong. Going inside, they found Simmons and his henchmen from the family, and Sherry and Jake joined them shortly afterwards. To answer Sherry's questions, Simmons admitted to being involved in the terrorist attacks, but blamed Leon for the president's death. The family then fired on the four, causing them to hide for cover. When Leon and Harper told Sherry and Jake to escape while they stayed behind to fight Simmons, Sherry gave them a chip containing information that could stop the C-Virus. As she and Jake made their escape, Leon and Harper opened fire on the family. Then they jumped onto a nearby train to pursue Simmons, who was shot with a C-Virus dart by a Ja'avo. Simmons stumbled away onto a passing train. As they found him at the front of the train, Simmons tried to divert their attention by first placing blame on Wong, then tried to rationalize his actions. Leon and Harper dismissed his remarks, as Simmons became enraged and eventually succumbed to the effects of the enhanced C-Virus, his body rupturing and granting him the ability to mutate into a larger canine-like creature of bone and muscle tissue. The two agents fought with the mutated Simmons throughout the series of train cars though he showed no signs of stopping and only taunted Harper with their sister's death. He even proved strong enough to knock another series of oncoming train cars off the railing. Simmons prepared to ram the train they were on head on, though they managed to trip him up as they opened fire, causing the train to ram him and flip him back on top of the train. His body briefly succumbed to the damage it received and reverted back to his human form. He recovered quickly, and as he started to mutate, Simmons declared that they have no idea what would happen if he were to die. Leon retorted that the world would be better off without him. Enraged, Simmons uses his brute strength to dislodge a piece of the train's roof and send it flying towards Leon and Harper. Leon managed to slide and shoot the debris to knock it off course, giving Harper an opening just as it passed overhead as she fired one bullet directly into the mutated Simmons' head. Becoming distraught with the situation before him as the family abandoned him, Simmons slipped from the edge of the train car and fell onto the tracks, the train running him over in the process. The cars became dislodged from the rails, and Harper and Leon were forced to leap off into the water nearby. Alive and exhausted, they pulled themselves ashore just outside of Tachi. They briefly overlooked the wreckage caused on the railroad before walking up off the dock, watching as civilians were being escorted to safety by the BSAA. Harper asked Leon if the ordeal was finally over, to which Leon replied, yeah. It's over. Before Harper and Leon could relax, Hunnigan suddenly contacted them to inform them that Sherry and Jake had been abducted. Harper realized that the file Sherry gave them had something to do with it. And as they looked over the files, she pointed out to Leon how the key to stopping the C-Virus actually lies in Jake Muller. As Leon tries to get in contact with someone in the BSAA to help rescue them, Harper spots an object in the sky just above. With Chris patched through, Leon informed him of their location, only to have Chris urgently yell for them to leave the area. The object overhead that Harper spotted was a huge missile that released the C-Virus in a blue fog over Tachi, infecting countless people. Leon told Chris to find Sherry and Jake and rescue them, and Harper overhears as Chris in turn told Leon that Wong was dead. Concerned, Harper asked Leon if he was alright but Leon only distantly mentioned finding survivors and escaping the city. 
With the help of some BSAA operators, Leon and Harper manage to avoid the blue fog and escape into a truck with one of the soldiers. The soldier drives them through the fog to the edge of the danger zone, directing them to the Quad Tower where the evacuees are being taken. Chaos reminiscent of Tall Oaks was everywhere as a stray gas tanker knocked them both out briefly. As they came to, infected citizens began to surround them until Wong suddenly appeared in the helicopter, providing them with cover fire to make their escape. They managed to find their way out to a bridge, overrun with zombies, that would lead directly to the Quad Tower. However, a plane set inside the building dislodged itself, starting a series of explosions that destroyed the bridge. Harper and Leon were forced to run, making their way to a BSAA helicopter to escape only to find the pilot was injured. Leon took the controls of the failing helicopter, managing to keep it suspended enough to crash through the side of the quad tower. Barely escaping the crash, Leon and Harper proceeded deeper into the tower. Harper and Leon were shocked to find Simmons waiting for them. Still greatly angered, he mutated into a new, gigantic form as he witnessed Wong circling overhead in her helicopter. With the help of Wong and the BSAA soldier they met back at the danger zone, they managed to bring Simmons' monstrous mutation down once again. Wong retreated to the roof with her helicopter, and Harper hoped the elevator was still operational. Noticing Leon's hesitation, she asked him what was wrong, but he insisted it was nothing. On the elevator ride up, Harper finally spoke about Wong, pointing out Leon's obvious feelings for her. Before Leon could respond, the elevator was blown off course by an explosion, forcing the agents to make a wild leap onto the neighboring elevator. Together, they climbed the support cable, only to witness Wong fighting with Simmons on top of a nearby connecting hallway between two of the towers. With Wong evading into another section of the tower, Harper and Leon found the opportunity to fire on Simmons from afar, until the platform they stopped on began to fall, forcing them to jump back onto the cable. Simmons' attention shifted to the two agents as they climbed further. Harper tried to call out for Wong's help as Wong returned the favor trying to slow Simmons down with gunfire. It was not long before Simmons went after Wong again, giving Harper and Leon the chance to find even ground once more, until Leon found a way over to help Wong as she was knocked out by Simmons. From afar, Harper could do nothing but provide cover fire for the two while fending off whatever zombies shambled her way. Though Harper was helpless as Simmons managed to knock Leon to the edge of the platform, leaving him dangling until Wong came to his rescue. With Simmons dispatched, Wong bid Leon a final farewell before departing. Though Harper urged him over their comms to go after her, Leon refused, stating that he and Harper were sticking together. Reaching the roof, they discovered Simmons had survived their last encounter, mutating further as he absorbed the bodies of the infected to power himself. Though Simmons briefly blocked the exit, they managed to injure him enough to the point where he was defenseless as surrounding undead swarmed and began to feed on him. They took note of the helicopter Wong had left them and rushed to it. Though, Simmons, newly mutated into a massive amalgamation of different insects, tried to stop them once more. Noting how Simmons used the bodies of the infected to regenerate, they used a loosened lightning rod to impale a zombie as Simmons took it to regenerate his damaged head. The rod attracted the lightning from the ongoing storm, causing the electrified creature to crash through the floor. They reached the helicopter, but the injured and fully mutated Simmons attempted to stop them. The agents managed to terminate Simmons with a rocket launcher left behind by Wong. The blast of the launcher knocking Simmons back and deep into the belly of the tower. As Simmons fell, his body mutated back into his human state, just as he was impaled on the obelisk Harper and Leon passed earlier, bleeding him out from his wound. Watching Simmons' death, Harper spoke of her finally getting revenge for her sister, as Leon suggested they get to the helicopter. In the helicopter, they found a compact left behind by Wong with a hidden compartment. Inside the compartment was a small data disk containing all of the evidence needed to prove that Simmons was behind the bioterrorist attack, the evidence to ensure Leon's innocence. When Leon said it would prove both of their innocence, Harper could only sadly remark that she did not need it. Some time after surviving the events in China, Harper visited the grave of her sister with Hunnigan and Leon and other agents present remarking that it is time for her to take responsibility. She thanked Leon and said that she was ready to be taken into custody for her crimes. With a nod of approval from Hunnigan, Leon approached and took Harper's arm, though instead of arresting her, he placed her gun in her hand. 
Harper was confused, proclaiming that she was an accessory to the attack on the president. Hunnigan informed Harper that upon reviewing the evidence, it was decided that it was not fair to hold Harper responsible for Simmons's crimes, and further said that the findings wouldn't be made public. When she tried to protest, Leon told her that President Benford would have done the same thing. Hunnigan suggested they join the rest of the team, though before departing, Harper gave Wong's compact back to Leon so that he can return it the next time he crosses paths with her. 